Hello everyone. Um, so this is Natas level eight to level nine. So it seems this application um, is a search functionality and it allows us to find words containing some string that we input. Um, so somehow we're gonna have to exploit this. Um, maybe that's not so clear immediately how, but let's try and put like an A and search to see what happens and you can see that we that we get a huge list of words so my assumption is that that we're searching against a dictionary for words containing um, our chosen string um, seems to be case insensitive because there's a uppercase a here but what does immediately um, come to mind is how do we use this to, to get the password for NATAS 10? It doesn't seem particularly obvious at first. Um, in the previous exercise, it was quite clear, um, but maybe not so much in this one. Uh, I think the, the intuition here, um, and with any sort of exploit, is that we have an input field. Um, and there's a there's a huge potential for attack there because we're able to supply data that's going to be sent and processed by the server. That's really important um, and it's very important for the server side to protect against that correctly because if we can send data and it gets processed incorrectly, there's a chance that we can sort of exploit that to retrieve data, um, to sort of execute commands, this kind of thing. Um, so we actually have access to the source code. So let's see if if they have handled this um, processing correctly. Okay, so we have the, you can see that the, the input um, field is named needle. And that's where we put our string in. And you have this PHP code so it has this empty string key, um, and then it checks to see if we've sent a needle, uh, is it, i.e. we've sent something via that search box. Um, and if we have, it's assigning it to that, that variable key. So key is essentially what we put in that search box. It's then checking to see if the key is an empty string. If it's not, i.e. we've put something in it, then it's using it in this pass through command. So we have this grep with an I flag, then our key, and then a dictionary.txt. Um, and pass through, I mean, we could search it and look it up, but it seems there's an assumption can be made here that it takes this string and executes it on the server, um, which has a glaring vulnerability. Um, if you're taking, if you're executing commands on a server, you should not be using user supplied data. What's happening here is they're taking what we've put in and injecting it directly into a command that's then running on the server. That's really dangerous because we could supply anything and maybe we could supply something that's gonna execute in a way that they don't expect. Um, and that's the whole point, that's the exploit here. If you're gonna use user supplied data, and especially in, a, um, in this sort of context, where you're passing it straight to the OS and executing a command, um, you need to, to clean that data, i.e. you need to ensure via code, you know, via checking, that there's no malicious um, pretense to the code, um, which is difficult to do. Um, so in theory, you, sh it, you know, really ideally, you shouldn't be using a command like this because it's just so easy to exploit. So us as attackers, we are looking and seeing what can we put in as this key that's going to somehow be useful to us. Um, and yeah, at this point, I would say if you don't know your sort of way around Linux, um, shell languages, this kind of thing, 
um, I would take a step back and maybe try and learn some of that because, you know, uh, the majority of servers are Linux based um, and you're going to need to understand sort of uh, code execution command execution um, within shell languages quite well um, because it's that knowledge base that you're going to sort of draw on to, to create exploits to solve problems like this. Um, there is the over the wire bandit series and I do have some tutorials on those that that's a really good way of of learning and practicing um, sort of uh, Linux based commands um, and if not there's plenty of tutorials online so I would suggest looking at them but assuming now that you you have some knowledge of of Linux we can see that there's this grep command with an I flag which means case insensitive so it's it's taking our string and searching line by line for it in this dictionary.txt and it will return the lines containing that key which matches up to what we experienced when we used the application okay so sort of a trick here um, and something that we can use and i've done on the whiteboard here is semicolons so semicolons um, in shell languages will finish the um, code execution of one command and start a new one that's a really good way of injecting our own commands as a payload into something like this um, we can we can stop we can end the grep command with a semicolon and then proceed to execute a command of our own um, and that's how we're going to exploit this um, so one way of testing to see if that's that's working um, it should do because we can see the source code is we can run an ls so let's run an ls and if we semicolon again then we're sort of sandwiching a command so if we sort of see this then what's happening on the server is it's executing this which will error but hopefully the error will be suppressed so we won't see it on the as a user it will then run ls as a command which should hopefully display the contents of the current directory and then it will try and execute a command to dictionary.txt which I imagine won't be a command that exists on that server so we'd expect an error there as well um, and so you can see sort of by putting two semicolons here we've kind of like sandwiched our own command and completely changed the nature of the command being executed on the server um, so let's try that let's see what happens and so now as an output we have the the list of files in that directory so we sort of with that as like a proof of concept we can kind of now try and create the command that we would wish to execute to retrieve the password for natas 10 um, and we're going to use the cat command and here we can see on the natas page that all the passwords are stored in this etsy slash natas webpass folder so that's what we're going to try and cat so we're going to run something like this this is the sort of uh, command we want to run yeah I think that makes sense. Um, before we run it, well, actually, let's run it first. Let's run it first. Cat, let's see, Natas web pass. It's 10, and then a semicolon. Yeah, and you can see that we've got the password. Um, I, 
there are several ways to do this. So I'll just do one more and I'll also show you quickly, you know, maybe this isn't so obvious. Um, and also trying sort of experimenting on the server whilst, whilst it's really good. Um, sometimes it's easier to experiment on your, on your machine um, where you can try different things and see things maybe a little bit clearer. Um, so I would just like to say like you can, one way to practice or to, to try uh, this on your own machine is so you see in here, I have like all of the passwords up to this point for Natas. Um, if I sort of make a new file, I'm going to call it dictionary.txt. Um, to sort of replicate uh, the scenario, then we can run PHP interactively. And I'm going to try and um, I'm going to try and get the password for NATAS9. And so again, you know, we can just, we can copy exactly what we saw on the server. Um, and let's, let's do it here. And then NATAS9.txt is in the same directory, so I don't need to do anything there. Yeah, and you can kind of see how this works. There's a usage command. This is like the error that gets suppressed. Then the password and then dictionary.txt command not found. Yeah, so this, you can kind of use this to sort of practice. Um, and also just as another way of showing really quickly, um, you know, that there's many ways to solve these kind of things. If we come back to this point, we could also just use the grep command um, to try and find the password. Um, you know, grep's going to return a string if it contains some substring. Um, so, you know, we can see that, for instance, the answer contains the number four. Um, so maybe like one way of another sort of solution is we could search for the number four in Etsy, that's a web pass. Like this, and then we're only using one semicolon. We're sort of completing the grep command here. Um, and obviously it's not so clear. We couldn't just pick four, right? Like, because we don't know the password normally, but, but say if for some reason you couldn't completely insert your own command, maybe you could use something like this and you could try the letter A, um, the number one, you know, you could try a few different things and maybe after a few tries you would get the password and just to show you that working as well. Let's try it with A first. So with A. Oh, is there an A in here? Oh yeah, of course there is, there's an A here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so there is an A, so it's worked. Um, but like say, for instance, if we tried it with the, let's, I, thought, I forgot it was case insensitive. Let's try it with like the number nine, for instance. It's not gonna work now. It should just be empty, yeah. Um, so, so there's several different ways of going about this is what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, this one was a little bit more fun, I guess, in a way. Um, it's cool to exploit things. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, okay, I'll see you in the next one. If there's any problems or if I didn't explain something clearly, um, then please leave a comment. Um, I'd be happy to get back to you. Okay, bye.